take the lead. And what, what do you expect here from the first start? Uh, I, I'm smiling because if you've seen Claudia race and you asked if she expects to take the lead, yes, that would be the that would be the surest bet of the of, the, of the of the year. Yes, Vegas Claudia likes to one. run from the front. There's no doubt about it. Okay, well they are getting warmed up. We are close. We haven't talked much about the course yet. This first part of it mostly grass, and then you get into some dirt. You know, it's a great course because it's a true cross country course. It's grass, it's dirt, it's hills, and there really is no flat part. You're running some kind of terrain that's a little bit up or a little bit down. Then when we go across the road, it's a lot of bit up. The 2017 Foot Locker National Championship. And as we mentioned, boy, everybody's going to go out hard. Now, this is a good part of the course because it's uphill just a little bit for about 150 meters, and then we head downhill. And Stephen, as we mentioned, right to the front there in that uh, lime glow, I think is what they call that color. But her West teammates right out with her. But Carrie, everybody's going to watch her, aren't they? They're going to feed off her, and that'll determine their race plans, won't it? Yeah, you know, we watched the webcast from last year, and that was the same thing last year in the women's race where we saw Claudia really take control. And she said that yesterday in her interview with me. She said, I am not afraid to take it out. She is not afraid of the record. Um, you know, she wants to win this race first, but she definitely has the record on her mind. So, you know, I'm not surprised to see her pushing early on this way. And to win her region by 72 seconds and most of her races by well over 40 seconds, uh, this girl knows how to run on her own, and she has to think about her race plan right now. She can't get too worried about what everyone else is thinking. Well, then everybody else has to stay with their race plan. Exactly. If this is going to be a fast first mile, then they have to. Uh, uh, last year, Nevada Moreno was very smart, ran very conservative, mm -hmm. and moved up well throughout the race. You can't get too caught up in that, can you? Well, you know what I think is it's interesting that you bring up Nevada Moreno, who was an 800 meters, 1500 meters, 1600 meters specialist. That was someone that worked her way back up to Claudia. Claudia is a true distance runner, and for you to be a true distance runner on this course, you have to get out. You can't expect to work your way up. So it's interesting. You see Catherine Lane, or Catherine Hart, excuse me, um, in. Caitlin Hart, I'm getting all these names except Caitlin Hart there, leading kind of the second pack there. She's more of a middle distance runner right now, running fast over 800 meters and 1,600 meters. So I'm not surprised to see her leading that second pack. That is a great pack, though. Everybody right in that group. Nobody's going to let anybody get away. But it is certainly the story is Claudia Lane out very quickly here. We'll get a half mile split as they go around. And, uh, you know, it would be remiss if we did not mention the course record is that incredible. What some people consider the greatest high school race ever run was Melody Fairchild's 1639. Only seven girls have ever broken 17 minutes on this course. However, when Melody Fairchild ran that 1639 the year before, she won that race and ran 1705. Claudia last year, 1704. I don't know if people understand how good Melody Fairchild is. We talk about her every year. She is someone that was such a talent in high school, went on and ran in college, and still running now. She ran last year, won the Masters Championship at the USA Cross Country Championship. So she's still very good and very, very much in the sport still. But Claudia Lane dominating right now and not even to the first mile. All right, a little bit faster than last year. She was a little bit over 235 last year at 800. This year, 234 right there was her split there as she went by. We can see in that second group, uh, Marley Starlipper, the young sophomore from Northern High School right up in there, Victoria Starcher in there, Mariah Howlett up in there. But that really is a large group. So our pace is a little quicker than last year, and we'll watch that as we go by and see. But as we know, when Melly broke the record, she did not go out really hard. You cannot run a really fast first 800. Well, you have to be under control, Tim, and we've known, we've seen this in all kinds of races, but you have to be under control when you're running at this level. You can't do anything that you haven't done before because things happen and things blow up. So Claudia looks well within herself. The only thing is, and it's not a secret, she's had a little bit of a sore throat the last couple of days, whether that's allergies, maybe some some of the smoke. I don't think we we have any of that really going on over on Coronado Island there, but you know, she has had a little bit of a sore throat and that can affect you. Now, is she so good that a sore throat doesn't affect her today? We'll have to see. Boy, she is really taking this pace out. This is incredible. This is a great feel. We're talking girls who have run under 10 minutes in that chase pack. And here we are just literally a thousand meters into the race and that lead is already a hundred yards. So they've just done sort of a loop and then come back around by where they started here and now they're gonna hit that 
hill at some point here, Tim. Uh, what do you expect from this point on? Well, that's interesting, Steve, because the hill, it comes up twice. It's about 350 meters long. It's very steep. Right after we hit the mile mark, it's a very steep hill of about 110 meters. But then it doesn't stop. It still just, in, just climbs for about another 200 meters. So it takes about 65 seconds to get through the entire top of the hill. But you know it takes about 15 seconds to get down because it's a very steep downhill. But if you go too hard on that first hill, Drew Hunter had a little trouble with that a couple years ago. He did the same kind of race plan. He was the defending champ, and everybody thought he could run away with it, and he did. And he just charged up the hill the first time. It was one of the fastest ascents we've ever seen. And he had a little trouble going up the second time. So even though you're great, you've got to be respectful of that hill. Yeah, I think going up the second time, everyone is, their form is sort of going out the door. You're just trying to get up. It's almost like you're climbing up it, but, and it feels like you're climbing with your hands and feet. It is so steep, and I say it every year, but if you haven't seen the hill, you need to go over and look at it, because these athletes are doing it twice. Carrie, you ran this race three times. I don't know if we've mentioned that in our coverage yet so far. So putting yourself in Claudia's shoes and some of the girls who've, who've run it before, what is it like to come back? Does that give you an edge? Have yeah. you done it? I do think it does give you an edge. I think a lot of these athletes that are returners definitely have that mentality. And, you know, people get to go home after they've run this race and visualize this course day after day. And I think that is such a good little secret that you can keep within yourself and be able to use in your training, whether you get, it, get through your state meet first and then you start thinking about this or if you've think, been thinking about it from day one. So we went by the mile at 5.17, a little faster than last year. She was around 5.19 last year, so a couple seconds quicker than that. And then the rest of our group right into that mid-5.20 range, which was right where uh, Nevada Moreno was last year. So they're running just about the same paces they were running last year. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, the favorites always seem to come home. 88% of the time, it's a regional champion that wins this girls' race. And our regional champions are all in that chase group. Obviously, Claudia is the champion from the West. But you've got uh, Olivia Tice right up in there. Marley Sarler for the sophomore. She's either uh, naive or not scared, Carrie. But she's right up there pushing that pace. Yeah, Marley said she's had a great year. And she really credits what happened last year in her statement to have be hungry for this year. She's been using her last year's experience as a ninth grader. She ran 449 over 1600 meters last year as a ninth grader you guys that's incredibly fast and so this girl is very very poised for being so young so not surprised to see her up there and she wants to win she said that she wants to be up there the Midwest girls have done a good job pushing that up the hill Tice right there Hart with her and Covert right behind her but already on the downhill and as actually has finished the downhill, now she's going to head back over to the start line area and we'll get a mile and a half split. Claudia Lane, just a junior here, our defending champion. She's out here to try to win her second championship here. Now, just a junior, and Kara, we've never had a three-time winner, but you got to win the second one first, don't you? Yeah, you have to win the second one first, but I think that, you know, with Claudia, she said she came here this year, and she feels fresh. She's She started her season a little bit later, about a month later, I believe, Tim, and so she isn't quite as tired, maybe, as she was last year, and if she was tired last year, then we better look out, because she looked phenomenal in 2016. Well, she's certainly on a mission here to become the eighth girl ever to break 17 minutes on this venerable course, and she is certainly on pace, a little faster than she was last year. This time, though, she is all by herself. No one chasing her from behind. Now, last year, she hit the halfway point. She was 8.03 right there when she comes by. And this year, 8.01, so a couple seconds ahead of where she was last year. And last year, they finished strong. But here she comes. All of you folks there, she comes by. Really one of the great high school runners of all time, Claudia Lane. You know, one interesting thing that Claudia did say is she feels a little bit of pressure now. I mean, she hasn't been running in this sport very long, Tim. She's only been running, I think, since she was in ninth grade, correct? So that's only a couple years here. So she said now she's starting to feel that pressure, but she likes it. She feeds off of it. And that's a great, great feeling to have when you know you do have the target on your back. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. You know, she really, as a freshman, was a pretty good runner, but not a great runner like she became as a sophomore. But speaking of sophomores, Marley Starliver, she looks great halfway through the race, and she is pushing that pace here. So as we mentioned, that hill comes up a second time. Anything could happen. But Starliver has really done a good job trying to move that pace along. The Midwest girls running together there in those pink outfits. They're running very well. We do have a team championship. The South girls won last year. 
I'm seeing a lot of blue and a lot of pink, so that means the Northeast and the Midwest representing well in that front pack there. Boy, it will be a great last mile and a half here as we head out through the dog park loop at the bottom. They'll make that turn, head back up. We'll get a two-mile split. But Claudia Lane sure looks great. Undefeated for 15 months. Brie Oakley was the last girl to beat her. That was in the very first race of last cross-country season. They had a great battle there, Arcadia Invitational, maybe with the greatest track race two high school runners have ever run. The gun went off. They went side, stride for stride for 3,200 meters. And Claudia just barely nipped her, and then Brie came back later in the Brooks meet at the end of the year and got her. So they had two great races last year, and they were the fastest girls in the country at 3,200 meters. So we've got two girls in this race who have broken 10 minutes for 3,200 on the track, Claudia and Rebecca Story. We certainly should see Rebecca over that last mile. Yeah, Claudia Lane taking a look over her shoulder there, you know, checking to see where she's at. She did it right at the right spot on a little turn. She's, it is very dusty out there. You guys haven't seen much rain, at, obviously, with all the fires that are happening here, too. But, you know, you can see her, her footing. It's tough out there right now. She's kicking up a lot of dirt, but the, the ground is actually pretty tough at times. There isn't anybody in front of her kicking up dust. That's no, for sure. no, there's there not. There you go. Well, you <laughs> mentioned the, the sore throat, and it very well could be part of the conditions because yep. while we don't have the smoke in the air, this area is under a red flag warning, which essentially means the conditions are ripe for a wildfire. But one of the big parts of that is just so dry. dry. Yep. Stephen, that's a great point. It is, and that gets tough as we get through further and further along in this race here. There's Olivia Tice. Leading that charge, Olivia is a great athlete as well, as you said, out of Michigan, just dominating her, her state. You know, one thing that we've mentioned in the past, but this is different for a lot of athletes that dominate their state. And they come here, and then they're surrounded by all of these great athletes. And it's quite intimidating at times. You know, you're not, you're not in charge of the race when you have everyone else around you. And you have to mentally be able to focus and not panic. And I think that was a big thing for all of us that sort of had you know, time where we were by ourselves in races, we could do whatever we wanted to do. If it was going well, great. If it wasn't, we still had a good cushion. This is a whole different ball game for these runners today if they have people surrounding them the entire race. Claudia Lane came by that two mile at 10.57, 15 second lead. Ties, Hart, and Starlipper right there, 11.12 and 11.13, a little bit of a gap. Jackie gone coming up. Wolfgram, Colbert, Lee, Schmidt, and Wallace. But coming by the start line area, Claudia Lane, that lead isn't growing, though, is it? That lead is just about what it's been for the last mile or so. But here come our girls from the Midwest, Tyson Hart, shoulder to shoulder. Starlipper there a little bit back, running in fourth. Jackie gone, very experienced, running well. Oh my gosh, the Midwest there. So we're scoring as a team, Midwest with five girls there in the uh, top eight as a group. They look outstanding. But Claudia Lane into the picnic park loop there on the bottom part of the course. Really a downhill stretch. And then we'll see how she does on that second time up the big hill. But Claudia Lane trying to defend her Foot Locker National Championship. Looks very strong. She, she just looks the same, whether it's the first race, the first step, or the last race and the last step. You said she looked so, so good at the West Regional there where she ran so fast on a little bit of a different course than you had last year with some construction, but just powerful up the big hills at Mount Sac. It's no secret that they, it's a very challenging course there and she dominated that as well. All right, a great race developing here with second and they're keeping themselves close enough. This is certainly not over for sure here at this point, but as we can see, Tyson Hart running very well together there and gone. Boy, we always say experience is what makes a, uh, the key here to looking for success here in the national championship race. Now, all these girls very experienced here. Outstanding runners, each and every one of them trying to make their spot, get one of those top five spots to be a Foot Locker All-American first team member. But Claudia Lane continues to push that pace, moving up. As we mentioned, we have Sarlifer and Jackie Gone of the Northeast. That's our top five right now. It is Lane, Tice, Hart, Starlipper, and Gone. And Claudia just about ready to attack the hill for the second time. We hit that hill. Again, it's about 350 meters from the bottom all the way to the top. And this is the steepest part. This is that part that Drew Hunter had a little bit of trouble with the second time after taking that pace out so hard. And Tice right there, and Hart. If Lane has any trouble, they are close enough to pounce. Hart, a 10-11 two-miler. 
She's a 444, 1600 meter runner. Both she and Tice are very good on the track as well. But you know, to be, to be using each other now this last mile is really kind of a nice thing for them to have, to keep pushing each other, not forget about the task at hand and making sure they keep their eyes on the front prize. Because you know what, when, when you see Claudia out there, it seems almost too daunting to want to chase, but you have to continue. You never know what can happen on these hills and especially the downhill. You got to keep your footing. You have to stay on your feet. Yeah, Star Leopard doing a great job. They're hanging well in fourth there. To give you the rest of those places as we go through, we also have up into that group there, we see Emily Covert up in there, Schmidt, uh, Tierney Wolfgram, the freshman, running great there, right in that group, six, seven, and eight in there. Sarah Schmidt up in there. We can see Catherine Lee, uh, Anna Wallace from the south running very well. And so, that was a great view that we just had there, Tim, showing the effort that it takes to get up yes. that hill, you know, Form, yeah, we'll keep the form if we can, but let's just get to the top. You right. can see it in their faces. And they know they got this downhill, so they just got to get up that uphill and then really stay safe on this downhill, and then the race is almost done. And then when they get to this point, when they get at the bottom of that downhill, this is really when the crowds start to uh, gather around. You see that there's a lot of space along the course there, but once uh, she hits this home stretch, she's going to hear a lot of cheering. Ooh, she looks good. Yeah, when she hits that road, we'll see her cross the road right there. That is just about four. 400 meters to go, and she's just about coming up to that point. Well, she has passed that point. She is running very well here. There she goes. She is a little bit faster than last year, about five seconds faster than last year. So she has a great shot to put herself in that elite group of women who have broken 17 minutes on this course. So she is trying to put a stamp on her second championship and she's coming now with about 250 meters to go. Claudia Lane, Jr. from Malibu, California, trying to repeat as Foot Locker national champion. The gun went off, she took the lead. She continues to pound on home. She's trying to remain undefeated. She's gonna come by the three mile mark right now. She hits that three mile mark here. She's right at 1628. That's four seconds faster. 17 minutes is the mark. Here she comes, Claudia Lane, the junior from Malibu High School in California, over the last little hill and just about 100 miles, 100 meters to go. We're at 1650 right now. A great race shaping up for second, but here she comes down the stretch. She'll repeat as Foot Locker national champion, Claudia Lane. Tice and Hart locked in a great battle. Tice trying, but here comes Caitlin Hart. Caitlin Hart with a great finish. The junior on your left there on that screen. Tice on the right, right down to the wire. Ho! Oh, looks like Hart and then Tice. Claudia Lane officially 1703. Hart 1722. 17.22 for Hart in second, and Tice also at 17.23. Catherine Lee, Lee 17.38, she'll finish in fourth. Jackie Gunn, a great race for her All-American first team. She finishes fifth at 17.44. Hannah, Anna Wallace, 17.48 at six. Wolfgram, a great race for her. She runs 17.51 to finish in seventh place. So once again, she repeats, Claudia Lane, sore throat or not, she is our national champion. As we welcome all the rest of these girls, all of them, league, section, regional, state champions, a great race. For those of you folks joining us here, Morley Fit, let us hear it for them as they come through. Once again, Claudia Lane's official time, 17.034, so slightly faster than last year. And in our great team battle, the Midwest dominating. Unofficially, it looks like the Midwest is gonna be under 36, under 30, it looks like, even there. In the Northeast, South, and the West there. Great race there. Catherine Hart, 17.22, we can give you officially now. Tice, 
1722, Catherine Lee, 1736, Jacqueline Jackie Gone, 1744, Anna Wallace, 1748, Wolf Grimm, 1751, Sarah Smith, 1756, Emily Covert, 1758, running in ninth place. And our 10th finisher is Adeline Ackley of Midwest Wright at 18 flat. Stephen, we have a defending champion, repeat as champion, and sets up no girl has ever, no athlete has ever won three national championships, and Claudia Lane now has that opportunity next year. I was going to wow. say, is it too early to, to start talking about three-peat? My goodness, talk 19 about immortality. seconds. I yeah, mean, well, you think about all the great girls who have come through here and, run and have gone on to Olympic medals, gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals, all the rest, and nobody's been able to win three times, and she has that chance. So she had a 19-second lead between uh, the second-place finisher. It doesn't sound like much, but that's an eternity in a race like this. Well, and those are great girls. You know, Tice and Hart are outstanding runners. They're going to be right there at the end of the year, uh, running right at 10 minutes again, right there with Rebecca Story and the rest of those girls. So this is these are great girls. We, we can't lose sight of it. Claudia Lane sometimes makes everybody else look like they may not be at that level, but they are great runners in their own right. Tice has had a great career already, so for her to run that well, that's great. Well, let's get downstairs to Carrie because she is standing next Next to the woman of the hour, Claudia Lane. All right, Claudia, you did it again. Talk about your feeling right now. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity again and to win. It's really cool. You really pushed from the gun. Talk about your race plan and was that record on your mind? Um, I mean, it was on my mind, but I'm fine that I didn't break it. You know, there's always next year. Um, I was pushing on the hills and on the uphills and stuff. It was a little tough, but um, overall, it was a really, really fun race. We saw you take a look back around two miles. What were you thinking at that point? Um, I just wanted to make sure there weren't any girls around me, and I saw them like 40 to 60 meters back, so I just knew that, you know, I had to keep pushing. You know, everyone talks about the hill. Going up that second hill, you really, the second time on the hill, you really look like you held your form, you're pushing hard. Was that really the point where you had, I had to get through that hill and then get going? Yeah, yeah, I definitely knew at that point that I really needed to keep pushing. And, um, you know, I was, I was so close to the finish. I knew that even if I expended all my energy, I'd almost be done. <laughs> what does Foot Locker mean to you? So much. Um, it's given me such an incredible opportunity to, to compete with amazing girls from all across the country, and I'm so grateful for it. Will we see you back? Oh, for sure, next year. <laughs> you could be the first to win three times. We talked about pressure coming into this race. As only a junior, you haven't been running this sport for very long. Does that feel good to have that kind of pressure now? You know, it does. And I think it's kind of like a fun kind of pressure in a way. You know, um, races are made more fun that way. And I think you challenge yourself hard. And that's one of my favorite things to do. So, yeah. Congratulations. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have our second place. So thank you so much. Come on in. We have Caitlin Hart here. Caitlin. Congratulations, you are runner up here at the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships. Talk about your race today and that amazing sprint that you had. Oh, thank you, yeah. It was an awesome race, obviously great, great, great competition. And um, I felt pretty good for most of it. And then up that last uphill, I was like, definitely getting tougher. And then I really just tried to use the downhill to take it to the finish. You know, you guys were battling hard, you and Olivia. Were your thoughts on finishing second? Were your thoughts still on trying to go for that win? Um, honestly, I think I was just trying to keep myself composed and, you know, just stay right on Olivia and hopefully run together and use each other to get to the finish. Well, congratulations to you. You'll never forget this moment. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have our third place, Olivia Tice. Another Midwesterner. Olivia, you had a great race today. Talk about your race. Um, I went out how I was supposed to. Um, I definitely wanted to push myself um, really hard, and I feel like I definitely did that. I definitely didn't have the kick at the end that Caitlin had, but she's amazing, so um, I gave it my best, and I'm happy with it. Well, you did not give up until the end. You were leaning hard. So, you know, what does it mean to you now to be on the podium at the Foot Locker National Championship? It means a lot. Um, I, a long time ago, I wouldn't have imagined that this would happen. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Great race. Thank you. All right, you guys, we're going to send it back to you. All right, so we have a senior, a junior, and a sophomore there 
and in the top three. And what's interesting is, as we talk about Claudia coming back for a three-peat next year, Caitlin Hart just a sophomore. So who knows what can happen in the next year? Yeah, you know, this is this is where stars start to shine for the first time. This is where we see people. Uh, Tierney Wolfgram, you know, seventh as a freshman, you know, to handle that pressure so well, right back in there. So hey, we're uh, I'm already excited about the 40th one. It's gonna be great. <laughs> well, first we have another race oh, coming up here, true. Tim. That's right. Well, because as 